It's been five months since we picked up the Hogwarts Legacy State of Play trailer with Chandler Wood, community manager, stating on Twitter back in May that the Warner Brothers and Avalanche team will be releasing some pretty cool stuff later on this summer, which is actually right around the corner as summer ends around the 23rd of September. But with that said, while we're waiting for our next official showcase, that doesn't mean that there isn't a lot of new information to talk about. So I'm going to take you through five recent rumours and leaks which are worth discussing and are pretty solid in my opinion. So let's first start with the release date because I reckon we'll be seeing Hogwarts Legacy releasing on Tuesday the 6th of December which I know is a pretty bold statement to make but let me walk you through why I think that and that's because the official Hogwarts Legacy art book which is currently available for pre-order on Amazon and I'll leave a link below so you can check it out yourself has recently had its release date changed from December the 31st to December the 6th. Now the reason why this is interesting is because placeholder dates such as the 31st of December are placed on pre-order products like this by retailers when they haven't been informed of an official release date by the studio. These placeholder dates are usually end of a quarter or end of the month until they hear something official from that game studio in question and the retailer will either keep that quarterly date in place or keep pushing the date back quarter by quarter until they hear something concrete and know when they're going to receive inventory for that pre-order item in question. Now this hasn't been the case here, in fact it's been moved forward by three weeks which is a positive sign in my opinion but we can go a step further here on why Tuesday the 6th of December is looking solid for release and that's because Warner Brothers likes to release their new games on Tuesdays with two recent examples of this being Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga which released on Tuesday the 5th of April and the upcoming Gotham Knights game scheduled for Tuesday October the 25th. In fact Gotham Knights also has a collector's art book available for pre-order ahead of the game's release which just so happens to be released on the same date that the game does become available to play that of course being Tuesday the 25th of October that we just mentioned so it could be very plausible that WB is using the same marketing strategy for Hogwarts Legacy as they are for Gotham Knights and there's a lot more comparisons we can pull from that upcoming title such as their game editions that are available for pre-order as Hogwarts Legacy has recently had their own game editions leak in their source code on their website and I'm going to break that all down for you fully in just a moment but before I do I want to bring your attention to one pre-order bonus leaked from that source code entry which states that if you do pre-order the digital deluxe or collector's editions you'll get early access to the game 72 hours before it goes public and this lends itself really nicely to that Tuesday December the 6th release date meaning it will go on full sale on Friday so people who don't pre-order the game can play it at the weekend and that will be three days after the early access launches. Now you may have noticed that this game isn't a PlayStation exclusive but rather it's going to be available across most platforms on release but it does seem to be getting the attention of a PlayStation exclusive game such as State of Play showcases as well as dual sense controller trailers from PlayStation on YouTube and in fact during Sony's latest corporate strategy meeting, according to Game Rant, Sony CEO Mr. Yoshida said on stage that we really value our relationships with third-party studios. And while he was saying this, there were a number of game logos on the screen behind him, such as Avatar Frontiers of Pandora and interestingly, Hogwarts Legacy. Now, the reason why I mention this is because it does seem to nod to a very strong partnership between Sony and the Warner Brothers team, even if a deal hasn't been made public or anything that we're kind of privy to. But with all that in mind, Sony wouldn't want to release Hogwarts Hogwarts Legacy too close to their PlayStation exclusive God of War Ragnarok game which is due to release on November the 9th. Doing so would risk cannibalizing the market share of each game as I would say that interest for both games is absolutely sky high at the moment and this is why Tuesday the 6th of December makes even more sense for a Hogwarts Legacy release because it would be one month after God of War which could be seen as enough time for gamers to finish that game, replenish their wallets and dive into Hogwarts in the run up to Christmas. Now as I mentioned at the start of the video Chandler said that we will be picking up something very tasty before summer ends and I think this is when we're going to find out the release date amongst a larger gameplay showcase and a little bit of speculation from me here but what better date for that announcement to happen than on the 1st of September which is a monumental day in the Wizarding World calendar as it's when students return to Hogwarts for a new term and catch the very famous Hogwarts Express from King's Cross and by the way before we do go over all of the leaked game editions if you are enjoying the video so far please do leave a very swift like down below it really helps 
helps me out on YouTube, so thank you very much. Now, a few weeks ago, Opale Element posted an amazing find on Reddit, that being a list of the suspected game additions for Hogwarts Legacy in their source code on their website. Now, this info was uploaded by the Warner Brothers web design team, by the way, so no unofficial bamboozles here. It's as clear cut as it gets in terms of leaks. However, this has now since been removed by Warner Brothers, but not until we were able to grab the provisional website layout pictures, thanks to Battle Dash BR on Reddit. And we have three here. We've got the standard, the digital deluxe and the collector's edition that were on show. And for reference, this is the same pre-order offering that WB have been offering fans for some of their most recent games, such as the Skywalker Saga, which was released with a digital deluxe edition and came with the exclusive Lego figure, as well as Gotham Knights, which is currently running with the same tiered pre-order template that has a variety of different bonuses with each edition tier. And let's break down the Hogwarts editions in detail now, because each edition comes with a base game, as you'd expect expect and with the standard edition not currently showing anything else in terms of a pre-order bonus I reckon that's going to change once it's been officially announced as I've also got a feeling that the standard pre-order bonus will be the Kelpie robe which is included in the deluxe and collector's edition and I say this because Opale mentions in his reddit post that this particular item has been separated in the source code from the other rewards which is very intriguing indeed because WB have done something similar with a pre-order bonus in Gotham Knights where you could could pick up the 233 custom bat cycle for pre-ordering even if it's just the standard edition otherwise there's not actually much incentive to pre-order the standard base game if you just get the game at retail price and nothing else and if you're wondering what the kelpie robe may be by the way well the kelpie is a shape-shifting water demon native to the british isles and we actually see newt scamander riding one in the crimes of grindelwald film so a robe based on this kelpie itself sounds absolutely awesome in my opinion now next up in the deluxe and collector's edition is the thestral mount and I'm very interested to see how this will affect the game if we do pick these up on day one because in the magical world you're only able to see a Thestral if you've witnessed death at least once so that lays down some interesting storyline questions for us in terms of what our protagonist has been doing or has seen before starting Hogwarts in our fifth year. We also pick up a dark arts cosmetic pack, a garrison hat and access to the battle arena and first thing that pops into my mind when I hear battle arena is some sort of area where we're going to be able to practice our spell slinging skills outside of the main storyline inside some sort of procedurally generated area with respawning enemies similar to the Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order battle arena mechanic that we did see in that game. Now it does stop there for the deluxe edition but in the collector's edition we also seem to pick up a steel case and if you're also wondering what that is I reckon it may have similarities to the Skywalker Sagas steelbook pre-order bonus and even the recent God of War collector's edition steelbook case which is designed to house your game disc and look very nice on your shelf. On top of that there's reference to a floating ancient magic wand with a book and I think this is our physical collector's exclusive item because we've seen similar Harry Potter merch like this before. You can actually purchase a floating magnetic broomstick which is actually a pen as well as a wand which does the same thing. So following suit with the Gotham Knight and Skywalker pre-order bonuses who both have physical items upon purchase I think we're going to get something similar here. Chandler also confirmed earlier on in this year that there will be no microtransactions in this game so I can't see these in-game rewards being offered months after the game's release for any sort of money unless they decide to release them for free. So you either pre-order the game, get the items or don't pre-order at all and then you just don't have any chance to get them ever again but let's just wait and see what they decide to do. Now, speaking of DLCs or otherwise known as downloadable content, even though we've just been discussing leaked DLC items, I briefly want to talk about expansion DLCs because quite a few of you have been asking about that in previous Hogwarts videos I've whipped up for you. And I'll link them at the end of this one if you haven't yet watched them and fancy a Hogwarts binge. But the straight up answer is we don't know yet if there will be any potential game expansions or DLCs after the initial base game is released. Now, I personally think there will be as interest in the game is significant. And if you haven't played a large open open world RPG game before, which is developed by a large studio that has a substantial amount of resources, a good example here is WB themselves, they usually continue to add content years after a game's initial release in the form of expansions and new game modes. Now a good example of this is Assassin's Creed Valhalla made by Ubisoft which was released in late 2020 and has since gone on to release three DLC expansions off the back of the main game with the fourth DLC expansion being released for free this week just gone and subsequently going 
going on to make over a billion dollars in the last two years. So I could certainly see WB and Avalanche doing the same thing here with Hogwarts Legacy, as there's just a huge amount of wizarding lore and content to play with, as well as a huge amount of interest from fans and gamers alike. In fact, ex-Hogwarts Legacy developer Troy Leavitt recently spoke to Alex at Podcast Now, and I'll link his awesome channel down below. But he said that he believes that WB and Avalanche have only focused directly on Hogwarts Legacy at present and haven't yet discussed it becoming a franchise as of yet. If it does become a success, then it would of course be a consideration and that would open up the possibility for future Hogwarts games. For me though, let's wait and see again what they say about Hogwarts Legacy post-launch content soon, as I've got a feeling that they'll want to keep us fans engaged with continual updates over the next couple years until they decide to perhaps release a completely new game. Now DLC expansions and new games aside, we've also picked up an in-game HUD or UI leak from the original State of Play trailer that has only recently been discovered by YouTuber Agito, and I'll link his channel and that video in particular down below in the description as well. But in this State of Play trailer, in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, around 6.11 to 6.12, you'll be able to see four icons, three of which look like the visual graphic buttons of spells that you'll be able to cast in game, and shout out to Bubbles Lou and Darkstar on the Photoshop edit here in the Hogwarts Legacy Discord so we can kind of see it a little bit clearer. But that said though, I do think that these spell icons are temporary placeholders because the fourth spell slot isn't even filled for a start and I don't think this is necessarily what we're going to be seeing in the final build of the game because only being able to equip four spells seems very restrictive to me and to draw comparisons to Assassin's Creed Valhalla once more this layout is really quite similar to what we can see in that game where you have two four ability slots in a diamond format in both corners of the screen meaning that you can bind eight specific abilities to your controller now that doesn't mean that there will be eight spells in the game because in valhalla there's dozens of different abilities to choose from in the menus but it does mean that after unlocking them and then trying them out yourself you can pick eight abilities in particular that you like to play with frequently as your kind of loadout per se and i've got to say after playing over 400 hours of that game with this ability binding system i think that eight spell slots during gameplay play would be more than enough so if Hogwarts was to do something similar here then that would be absolutely fine by me. Now we do have some more juicier insider leaks to break down here thanks to the fantastic Hogwarts YouTuber Retro Raconteur who it seems has been tipped off by a few people behind the scenes back in February and more recently about Quidditch so link to his channel is of course down below in the description as well and let's first talk about some of the things that he was told back in February because a lot has changed since then including the release of the State of Play trailer back in March. First of all, he was told that the developers were heavily inspired by the level design of Ghost of Tsushima, The Last of Us Part 2, and Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And these are all solid games to be taken influence from, in my opinion, so big tick there. But number two was that enemy camps will be a core part of gameplay involving combat, stealth, and exploration all playing a role within it. This lines up really nicely from what we've been shown so far, as there's several enemy camps that we can see in the trailer, as well as the utilization of new stealth mechanics in the game by using the Disillusionment Charm and the Petrificus Totalis spell to great effect in this example, as you can see here. Retro also went on to say that he was informed that the game would include a lot of dungeons with an entire team at Avalanche Studios dedicated to designing these. And even though they haven't been officially confirmed as a game mechanic as of yet, we have seen plenty so far in the reveals to tell us that this will certainly be playing a huge role in the game. And I've got a feeling we'll be hearing a lot more about this soon. And I can envisage us entering these hidden dungeons where we'll have to defeat bosses like this Guardian and his minions, or perhaps defeat constant swarms of Infrai. And once we we do, we'll be able to pass through the final gates of the dungeon itself and pick up special rewards like new spells, abilities, storyline secrets, or special cosmetic items. Now another fantastic Hogwarts YouTube channel is Expecto Go, with James recently whipping up a solid video about some of these dungeons being related to Merlin himself. So I'll pop another link down below and you should definitely check out James and Sue's channel as well, well worth your time. But dungeons aside, Retro went on to further say that he was told that there will be multiple regions across the world with ex-developer Troy also mentioning in his podcast now interview with Alex that this game is and I quote a really really big game and this also makes sense from what THV3 posted on Reddit. He took a screenshot of the map shown in the behind the scenes trailer and expanded upon the coordinates placed there by Avalanche. He matched those coordinates block by block until reaching the one by one square space which you can see on your screen here 
here. And a good point to note, by the way, is that this is just the minimum size. It could be expanded beyond the 6x6 tile size, as shown here. So we're in for a big one with multiple regions. And what better way to get around this huge map than using the flu powder fast travel network, which Warner Bros did confirm on their Twitter account recently. And with a map so large, you'd expect local towns to be there, which is exactly what Retro was told back in February as well. So apart from Hogsmeade Village and Diagon Alley, which have already been confirmed to be in the game by Warner Bros, and I'm just speculating here, but could we see the wizarding towns of Bantry, Montrose, Wigtown, or Portry, which are all locations in Scotland. And if you didn't know, that's where Hogwarts is based, by the way. But each of those towns have their own Quidditch team, respectively. So potential to see them included in this large map, I reckon, and some pretty exciting possibilities here. And by the way, if you do want to keep up to date with everything Hogwarts Legacy, make sure you do subscribe so you can find your way back here easily. And as mentioned earlier, do check out all the other Hogwarts videos I've whipped up for you if you've enjoyed this one. Hopefully you'll enjoy them as well. And big thanks to you reloaders who support me through YouTube channel memberships. You're all the best and I'll catch you in the next video in just a second. Butterbeer is on me.